Welcome to the T2 Hubcast. Join T2 and guests as they discuss all things personal and professional development. The T2 Hubcast, brought to you by the People Performance People. So welcome to the T2 Hubcast with me, Martin Johnson. And me, Tracy Roberts. T-Bone. Hello. How are you doing? Marvellous. Yeah, it's Monday, I'm tired. Yeah. Drunk too much booze over the weekend. Oh dear. But it was nice. I enjoyed it. Good. That's all it counts. So we're not going to do any leadership. Well, may it links in, but we're not going to do any particular classic content, are we? We're going to bring back a T2 classic. Yeah. And it's your debut. On it this. is my debut and I'm quite excited about it. <laughs> so for anybody who has been listening in a while, or if you go back in the archive, archive you'll see we've done, I think, three yeah. versions of Corporate Clangers. Yeah. Corporate Clangers is the the corporate version of Room 101. <laughs> it's where we discuss things that are incredibly tedious or that challenges or that pisses off mm. about the corporate workplace. And we table them and state our case and we desire, decide whether we're going to can it or keep it. Yeah. Because sometimes it might just be us having a good old moan about something we dislike. Other times it's absolutely about something which is just not acceptable or appropriate. And it has no place yeah. in the workplace. Or it's just annoying. Just annoying. Stop really doing it. Really annoying. So corporate clangers. Um, we can go anywhere we want with this, but usually we give three or four each. Can yeah. it or keep it? And we'll move on. So seeing as it's your debut, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> Great, keep I knew it, you were. T, because I don't know what you're going to say and you don't know what I'm going to say. Keep it clean, please, because I know what you like. <laughs> keep it clean. Pop calling and, kettle over. Absolutely. So what's your first corporate clanger? My first corporate clanger is something we were talking about on Monday last week, desk bombers. Desk bombers. Yeah. And what I mean by that is people approaching your desk without warning, expecting the world on a stick. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. think it's acceptable? What do you think about it? Because I think we had a good chat about this last week and we said that actually had some really good elements to it because sometimes on the spot stuff is, you know, good. It generates some momentum. Um, you know, sometimes you do just catch someone in the moment, don't you? And, and you can embrace it. But for many people, it's a frustration because they're quite analytical. They're concentrating a lot. They've got a huge big to-do list. So I don't know. What do you reckon? I reckon it's it can be... Yes, it can be absolutely annoying. Terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying and annoying. But it can also, like you say, in our environment, it can be, it can really drive creative conversations, those yeah. spontaneous off the cuff ideas while the emotion is high and the idea is hot, let dis- let's discuss mm. it. Yeah. But I would say more often than not, <laughs> if it's uh, excessive or unwanted or unannounced, we used to call it the drive-by. Yeah. So the drive, the classic drive-by yeah. where you're getting on with something, you've got your head in the game, you're prepping for a client or mm. you've got your head in a spreadsheet or something mm. and someone goes, have you got a minute? Or Tracy, can have I just run you got this? a minute is yeah. like the worst sentence ever. Yeah. I don't even say that now. I just, because we all sit on an open plan floor, don't yeah. we? We don't have our own offices. So it's like, right. I'll just shout somebody's name across the room. I'm like, Lydia. And she'll sort of, I can see it. It's from a look that. on her face. Yeah. She'll go, yes. But really <laughs> she's thinking, oh my God, what's he want now? Yeah. Yeah. Death bombers. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to have a hard time canning this. Yeah. Because I think if people are listening to this, they'll go, I hate it. Yeah. Can it. Hmm. Or I think some people might go, no, because that's what gives a, uh, um, an office, a bit of environment, a bit of creativity, mm. a bit of a vibe. Yeah. Um, rather than us all being tucked away in separate offices and having to knock or schedule an appointment to have a discussion. Oh, yeah, I hate that. Yeah, definitely. I think it requires an awful lot of emotional intelligence, T, on individuals to know when it's a good time and when it's not. That's where agree? I was going, actually. I think pick your moments. We talk about ed- energy distribution cycles and all sorts, and we're all slightly different in here, aren't we? I know to shut my mouth until 10 o'clock in the morning with Lydia. <laughs> and then I desk bomb her and she doesn't know what's hit her. But I think, yeah, I think it's that. I think it's reading the room a little bit. Yeah. It's, um, so we'll keep it. And it but depends time on the and nature. Place. It depends on the nature. <laughs> if someone says, Mike, can, can I just pick your brain for a second? Yeah. I'm all for it. I'm like, yes, you want yeah. to pick my brains. You've just stroked my ego yeah. and said that I could be remotely of use to you. So go <laughs> for it. Right. Whereas if someone says, 
if someone desk bombs you and says, did you get that email? Oh, my word. The chances are, yes, I've got it. But, but I ignored it. <laughs> I am, or I am, I am going to get to it. You coming by my desk and saying, have I read it yet? It's not going to speed me up. No, it's going to make Thank you drag you your much. heels. No, totally. All right. Desk bombing. Can it or keep it? I say keep it, but think about when you do it. Maybe. Okay. Keep it, but you have to apply emotional intelligence yeah. and make sure it's applicable and timed correctly. Yeah. Cool. Right. My first one. Hit me. Heating versus air conditioning in the office. <laughs> oh, God. This is an interesting one because we're 50 50 in here, aren't we? I, I constantly walk into our office and think it's like backdraft. <laughs> <laughs> I open the door and I just get this weird, especially if I'm, because yeah. I'm usually last in as well, aren't yeah. I? Yeah. So. All you lot have got in, hmm. cranked the heating onto 26 or whatever it I'm is. I'm an aircon girl. <laughs> and then I get in and I yeah. open the door and I, and oh. it's like, oh my God. Like when you go and hold it and you get out of the aircraft. Yeah. 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 It's like yeah. that in the office when it's 15, 16 degrees outside. Yeah. yeah. I'm, now, don't yeah. get me wrong. When you first get in on a winter's morning, crank it up for an hour. An and hour. Then turn it off. And then turn it off because yeah. the air will keep. Whereas yeah. in our office, and I don't know if it's a male female thing, but there's definitely something in that because mm. we're split fifty fifty, yeah, aren't we? Females and males. Yeah. But it does tend to be the girls who want to have the heating on versus the boys who get hot and want windows open. And yeah, there's definitely something. in I that. am glad I'm at that side of the room, and I'm the only female because I'm the opposite. I like cool. I like. I'd rather be cold and warm myself up. I get rage if I'm too hot. Well, let me give you a bit of a, a statistic on this. There is an optimal temperature for high productivity. Mm. What do you think it is? What has been found to be the optimal temperature in an office space or a room or a working environment? 16 degrees? <laughs> no, that is far <laughs> too cold. You'll have people listening 21. to it. 21. Yeah. 21. I prefer 16 degrees. <laughs> tw- 21 is tw- apparently 21 degrees yeah. is the optimal temperature for high productivity. Right. Any yeah. less and it can get cold for some people mm-hmm. and any more and it, people get tired and it becomes hot. Yeah, I can definitely make the case because that's what happens to me. I start to go in the afternoon if that's why I crack the window like you. So here's my proposal. No one should have the ability to adjust the air con in a workspace. It should be set at a default 21 degrees. Yeah. All year round, or you can turn it off and open a window in the summer. Yeah. Of course, though, you do want less in the heat of the heat wave. You want maybe yeah. 19, 18. Yeah, yeah. So maybe allow people to decrease it from 21 to 18, something yeah. like that. However, 21 should be the cap. So that's okay. what I'm yeah, saying. Can yeah. it Can it or keep it 21 degrees cap yeah. in the heating on the air con? Yeah, I agree. Totally. Right. We're canning it. I've won. <laughs> I wasn't going to fight you. Listen, out there, there's no reason why you need 24 degrees in an office space. Mm. It's all right when you're not paying the bloody bills, isn't well, it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> we don't want people falling asleep in the afternoon, do we? Right then. Heating versus air con. Optimal 21 <laughs> degrees. Anything outside of that, we're canning it. Okay. T, bye. over to you. Okay. My next one is the invisible man. The invisible man. Yeah. The person who's in the meeting but isn't really in the meeting. Because they come in, but they're not there. They're in another world. They're not present. Yeah. Or even worse, they they don't come, but they should be there. I don't know. There's both sides to it. So there's the person who comes and is really kind of distracted for the whole meeting, therefore gives nothing in. Or they will only comment following the meeting or getting involved in the conversation after the meeting. Yeah. So they may as well have not been there. What what you're talking about here is people who generally have a complete lack of commitment yes. for a meeting where it's important other people are present and yet they're not, or yeah. they're not there on time. Or I'm going to add to this because this comes into my second one. Oh, does it? There's okay. one statement that I think needs to go in, can it, which is, they come into the meeting yeah. and they start the meeting by saying, listen, guys, I'm giving you a heads up. I might need to duck out of this. Like if we do a training session, sometimes yeah. you'll get people coming in saying, listen, I've got to leave by one o'clock or I've got to duck out of this or I might be expecting yeah. a phone yeah. call. And I want to sort of go, well, don't fucking bother then. No, I get it. Don't I, bother. That's why I called it out because I hate it. I think if you can't be fully present, then don't come in. Don't bother. If, if, 
you can't be fully present in the meeting or you can't commit to the length of time, yeah. there's no point in you being in it for part of it. Mm-hmm. I often say now to people who come in training session, I'm like, you might as well just j- jump on another cohort. You're yeah, gonna, no, you're, you're going to miss the right. vast majority of it. And it affects other people in the meeting, doesn't it? Because they can feel like that lack of, and then sometimes if they're not in it at the time, but then they try and put their input in afterwards, that just pisses people off. Well, I've tested it out. Some people go, I might need to duck out of this meeting and then end up staying in for it mm-hmm. for the entire meeting once yeah. they realize that it's either good or productive, yeah, which yeah. means all along it was a bit of a tactic. Like if I'm not yeah. interested in this or if it's not going the way I want it, I'm giving myself an out because I'm Very saying I've got to live. I know. <laughs> but then all of a sudden you find for it. Listen, if you're going to start any meeting with, I might need to duck out of this, don't bother. Don't, don't bother. Just don't. You're either, you've either put it in your diary and it's a priority for, for you or it's not. Yeah. Absolutely. And if something changes, don't attend the meeting or cancel it. But I might need to duck out is a waste of everybody's time. Yeah, totally. So we're canning it. We're definitely canning that one. Awesome. Right. I'm going to put another one in the mix. Go on then. Unhygienic workspaces. Oh. Or Sophie rattling around in the background while we're recording a podcast. (laughs) She's looking at me now through the window. She's going to be all We're doing this podcast on corporate claggers and Sophie's decided to clean the kitchen and put all the cups away. (laughs) So if you can can hear cutlery clacking, it's Sophie. Yeah, we didn't do it intentionally to like, <laughs> add to the flavour of the podcast She's or anything. She's mortified now. She's looking at me. <laughs> no, unhygienic workspaces. And we have a bit of a, a corridor at T2 in T2's office called mm. Coffee Ring Corridor. Oh, don't. Coffee Ring Corridor where uh, it's my pet hate this. People, I put the coffee on the side, spill it, have a coffee ring. And instead of cleaning it up, they just build them. It's like a like a hetcher sketch it's like the circles upon circles. <laughs> it's like a pattern and they just keep moving it to the right so more rings appear in like a pattern. It's like clean it up. Well, you you know that's one of my bugbears because one of the first gifts I got from anybody after joining here after two weeks was a pack of coasters. And I've literally handed those coasters around everybody in this office and tried to make sure they have one to drop the hint. But not everyone takes it. If you want to know, if you want to find out who's got unhygienic workspaces, go to people's keyboards and yeah. tip them upside down. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and when half of Greg's falls out the keyboard, <laughs> I swear to God, when half of Greg's falls out the keyboard, you've got your culprits. You do, 100%. It's just look after your personal space, man. We all have to operate in close proximity. Mm. Wipe your coffee rings up, clean your keyboard out every now and then. Get your duster out. Get your, <laughs> wipe down your workspace. <laughs> For God's sake. Cops. Cops and cops. That bugs me. Like, Where do you stand on people who make coffees on top without cleaning the cup out. So no, just... <laughs> no, 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 no. That's just wrong. I think I'm totally the opposite way, so I'm too clean. Yeah, yeah too OCD. Probably too OCD, but no, that, that that's not going to happen, no. But when, listen, you can do what you want at home, people. You can <laughs> do what you want idiot. at home. You can have your sink piled up with pots. You can have coffee rings all over your house, mm. right? You can have half a Greg's building up in your crevices around the house crevices. Right? <laughs> what a word. you can have half of greg's building up in your crevices and you can have your fingernails bitten and Aww. and all over the house right not in the bloody workplace please because you've no. got a duty of care to the people around you to sort your workspace out absolutely this has got to go in right we've got to can it yeah 100 percent. is there anybody out there who would challenge canning unhygienic people in the workplace <laughs> No, just the unhygienic people. just the unhygienic people the who, self-employed ones yeah, <laughs> they say let me be me <laughs> I'm unhygienic, so what? Okay, we're canning that. Definitely. Next one for you, T. The word synergize. Synergize or synergy. Yeah. Well, synergize gets used a lot, doesn't it? Like, let's synergize on this. And what bugs me about that, that is that I usually, it's used in the context of also getting the team to kind of be cohesive and do stuff. But at the same time, if you look at the characteristics and the behaviors that are going on within the organization, they're the complete opposite to allow that to happen. So this is more of a leadership one. How can we synergize if we don't talk to each other correctly? I don't use the word synergy or synergize. Synergize is an interesting one. It sounds like a keep fit class, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? I'm attending synergize on Tuesday night down the gym. Maybe we could... Uh, yeah, we could use that in here, actually. You can have a synergize class thrown in halfway through the day. Um. But yeah, it just bothers me because it's one of those words, it's sort of like we need to synergize, we need to force each other to, you know, work together. But actually, 
are our actions, behaviors, and you know the values and the cultural stuff that we're working on? Does that allow us to do that anyway? In, in which case, why are we having to synergize? We should be doing it already. In synergize just a, a clever word for collaborate. Yeah. They mean similar things, right? Which is why it bothers me, because collaboration is obviously key in business. Um, But I think the thing that bothers me about it is it is a posh way of saying it, but really what we're saying is we don't do that normally, so let's do it now. Yeah. But we should just be doing it. I agree. So for two reasons, A, it's pretentious. B, it's uh, contradictory half the time. So let's can it and save it for Tuesday night keep fit class. Absolutely. You attend synergize down the gym. You don't do it in the workplace. Yeah. Awesome. It's in. I've got one more. <laughs> got it. I've got one more. Um, one close to my heart. And possibly the one that I reckon most people will disagree with me on. Oh, controversial as ever. It is. I would like to rep- I would like to put holidays. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> He's holidays, now. holidays, I'd like to put in the can. Now, okay. I know I can't. I'm going to hear you out. I know I can't because people need holidays, right? Yeah. People need rest and yeah, recuperation. Yeah, we do, we do. So let me elaborate on it. I'm going to put holiday, or unnecessary holidays or holidays um, for nothing. Okay. Stroke, tagging holidays onto bank holiday weekends just to milk the pants off it if you can. <laughs> so what I'm saying by this is if people you're going to go... screaming at this I know. Point. People are going to be going, and you run a business? And you're a culture and leadership person? Yeah, I am. Stop the unnecessary holidays. <laughs> Please help us out. Help an employer out, will you? I think it baffles me, though, T, when someone goes, can I take the 16th to the 21st off? Yeah, yeah, sure. Where are you going? Oh, nowhere. I just want the week off. And it's like, really, you're going to use, you know, a percentage of your entitlement to sit at home and do nothing? Now, some people will be screaming at me going, who are you to decide who, yeah. what a good use of time is, yeah. right? Because rest time is good time. But I just think, go, go to Mex, go to Spain, <laughs> even go down to Cornwall, go camping. Go to Driffield. Do something <laughs> with your holidays. It's your precious time. And, and it just baffles me how not everybody does it, but some people just take their holidays to do nothing. But some, some people need it for that reason, don't they? Like, you're a doer like me, so yeah. I can't sit still. So I don't take holidays unless I feel like I really need them. But for some people, that's their way of forcing themselves to stop, isn't it? It is. But I, I get like it. it. I get what you mean, because sometimes you do talk to people, say, what did you do in your week off? And they were actually bored rigid. Yeah. And you think, what about when they go, can I take this day off? Yeah, why? Well, it's a bank holiday, so it just gives me an extra day. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that your is that your like philosophy? That's, yeah, I, so I agree you've with that so one. let me get this straight, right? You've already got a long weekend. But you've you already got three days off, weekends. but now you want four just because you can and because mm-hmm. it extends it slightly. But you're not going anywhere. You're not doing yeah. anything. I'm just yeah. taking it. <laughs> I mean, am I being unreasonable here? I think <laughs> I think I think I can see both sides because obviously from someone who sort of tries to help manage diaries and stuff like that, I can see how frustrating it is. Um but I think it's down to like how you decompress, don't you think? Yeah, it Some is. people go in and they really want to do nothing because that's their way of clearing their mind. For other people, they want to go and do stuff so they can talk about it and have, you know, create experiences, don't they? So, But as an employer, I think I've always got this unhealthy position, which is unhealthy, of... But isn't your work everything in your world and your life? Why wouldn't you want to be here? Why would you possibly want to take a week's holiday when you've got nothing to do? Surely you'd rather be here working for me. <laughs> <laughs> and people look at me and go, "No, mate, I need it's a funny break from you." Because it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. The worst thing, the biggest. I don't think anybody at T Two fears anything. We have a really no. open culture, yeah. and it's fantastic. And people, but the one thing people dread is walking over with a holiday form. <laughs> That's why they like coming to me now instead like, of you. Oh, for <laughs> sake. Okay, I concede. Yeah, I don't I think we, think we can put holidays one. for nothing in the can because I think people reserve the right to take holiday and do nothing, to Compress, tag on an extra yeah. bank holiday day to not manipulate, but to slightly take <laughs> advantage of the of the system. Um yeah, I'm gonna lose this one, aren't I? I think so. I think so. I see your points though. I do I do see and hear you. But we all need a bit of time off from time to time, don't we? Even if, 
you know, we're doing nothing. For some people, they just want to fill it with loads of good stuff and have loads of stories to tell. I but... can't think of a single situation where I'd take a holiday and sit at home on my city because oh, that's okay. just me. It's yeah. like I'd be a complete waste something. of time and energy. If I'm traveling with the kids and my wife, fantastic. If we're going on holiday, fantastic. Mm. If I'm, you know, playing a, a golf competition yeah. with clients or whatever, fantastic, right? But Still just productive. to say, do you know what? Yeah. I'm going to take Monday off. Why? Um, just going to take it off. I don't think that would ever enter my mind. However, I get it. Some people yeah. do that. Good on you. Good luck. Fantastic. Yeah. I've lost. You have definitely lost that one. All right, T. Have you got final one or are you out? I'm out for today. I'm out. So what went in the can and corporate clangers? Heating above 21 degrees is a no-no. Nope. We can drop it in the summer for the heat wave and get a bit of cool air, but there should never be a scenario where we go above that. Yeah. Unless it's freezing on a winter's morning, then we're going to allow you to put it on a bit more, but only for an hour. Only for an hour. Awesome. Um, people who duck out of meetings, don't attend meetings, not present in meetings, the invisible man, Absolutely. woman, just the person, well, it, it, don't bother. Unless yeah. you are there for a reason and it's important, you've got to question if it's mm. a waste of time anyway. So we're going to can that. Yeah. Holidays for nothing. Didn't get it over the line. I'll take that. Unhygienic workspaces. <laughs> when Definitely. half of Greg's falls out your keyboard and your fingernails and it's coffee oh, ring corridor. <laughs> You're cringing at that, aren't you? <laughs> and it's coffee ring corridor. Oh, no, no, stop it. It's a no from me. Be a, be a normal hygienic human mm. being. Definitely yep. going in the can. And what did I miss on and yours? And let's stop synergizing. <laughs> Synergize is Tuesday night exercise class down the local gym. It's not something we do in the workplace. Coming to a class near you very soon. <laughs> I think offline we should talk about launching T2 Synergize. I think we should. It can, re- yeah. I'm up for it. I mean, watch I'm qualified, this, why not? Watch this space, people. T2 Synergize come into a lunch hour near you. <laughs> I can just picture you like Mr. Motivator, dressed up in all your lycra, (laughs) synergizing across the office floor. Okay, T, corporate clangers, we got some victories there. We didn't get others. We'll have to get maybe our Spencer back in for corporate clangers five and because he he always likes a good old moan about stuff, doesn't he? So we'll get Spencer in for that. Enjoyed that. Bit of lightheartedness. Um, And we'll be back shortly with another T2 Hubcast. Thank you.